in scientific thinking, we have some overlaps, again, in thought and in the scientific spirit, we do have some overlaps, but the approach, the scientific method is quite different. If we were to uh, speak to the language, and as Moonhawk speaks about that language is, the language is different in the sense that we are process, uh, based language and English is very noun based. When we're saying noun, what's happening is we're, it's almost like we've got a container. But within that container, because the container is fixed, we end up putting differing experiences. They might be similar into the container. Those experiences which the noun is the containing container for, we then start to come down to specifics, see? And that's why in English, see, we're always hung up on definition, defining things and so on. And we end up just like using the funnel again. We start out over here on a broad base and then we come down to the point like a funnel. When we come to the tip of the funnel, hey, here's the answer, so to speak. Whereas in Blackfoot thought, in Navajo thought, uh, in Cree thought, hey, it's about processes. It's about happenings. The best example of this is Gary Witherspoon who studied the Navajo language in a book that he wrote about art. He said in English, the verb to go, in Navajo can be conjugated 354,000 different ways. We never say what it is. Where do we say and we talk to what is happening? So again, when we had these conversations with David Bohm, many of the things that he was talking about are things that are part of, as I've been saying, the everyday process of Blackfoot thinking. Time is not in, inherent in the language. If you're going to add a time factor, you have to specify. Whereas in English, it's already inherent in the, and consequently as part of English grammar, we have to use all the right tenses and so forth. One other major difference is the dichotomous thinking, the binary thinking in English, which is either or, black, white, saint, sinner, day, night. In Blackfoot, you don't have those binaries. It's not because you can't do it. We think of all possibilities, kind of like a continuum that exists. See, the language does not allow you to be good and bad at the same time. You're either or. In Blackfoot thought, in Navajo thought, you can be partly good and partly bad, see? You can be both. And so you'll hear elders saying, well, you know, there's a little bit of good, there's a little bit of bad in everybody. Nobody is all good, nobody is all bad. See? So, which makes for a very different way of looking at things. And as a result, one of the other differences, especially again, this is interesting for science, is that in Western thought, what we would refer to as real, if we're talking in philosophy and we're talking about reality, okay? And science has a lot to do with, you know, speaking to what's real, okay? Especially in physics. That's what physicists do. They're looking, they're searching for reality, okay? 
Well, reality is only, is only approached from a state of awakeness. Because of this notion of a much broader spectrum of, you know, a much broader spectrum from which native thinking approaches what's out there, you know, what's reality, dreams are part of that spectrum. So you can draw on dreams as a basis for your evidence. You can draw on birds, you know, animals, other beings. You know, you can draw on a shooting star, you know, as part of the evidence from which, from which you would draw to, to be able to put the puzzle together so that you can come out and say, I know. In, in English, you know, in fact, we narrow ourselves down. In other words, we make the window smaller from which we look out through. In Blackfoot thought, in Navajo thought, the window is much wider. And this, in fact, may also be connected to notions about objectivity. When you stop and think about it, there is no such a thing as objectivity. Because everything you know is subjective. The only way you can say that it's objective is if you're outside of the universe. But there's nobody on the outside of the universe that can tell us. In the native world, it's really the foundational base, if I can refer to it, David Bohm refers to it as the implicate order. We refer to it as the flux. That's the foundational base. And above it is order. So in the native world, it's really order over chaos. In the Eurocentric, Euro-American world, it's really the opposite. It's really chaos over order. If you were to take a scientist like Einstein and his famous saying, God does not play dice with the universe, what is implied in that is that the creator, God, made the universe and his work is perfect and not changing. This is the way it's made. In other words, like Walter Cronkite says, this is the way it is. That's the way it is. And Einstein went so far as to say, maybe half jokingly, I can come to know it all, providing I could, you know, live long enough. See, in other words, because the universe is never going to change, this is the way it's made. Which basically begins to say is, if you were to put uh, order and chaos over one another, Einstein's approach would be that there's an underlying order. And if there's any chaos, the chaos is really brought about by us. If you were to look at the Blackfoot view, if you were to look at Navajo views and other Native American views, what you will see is it's the opposite. There's an implicate order, which David Bohm was talking about, there may be some order to it. It's just that it's so out of our reach, it's so much bigger than us that we can't begin to see that order and consequently why he calls it an implicate order. But that's what we refer to in our writings and in our talks as, flu as flux. See, it's constant motion, it's constant flux, constant change, transformation, deformation, and so forth. It's just forever changing. Out of the flux, we try to develop some order. Okay? And what's that order? It's our culture. It's our worldviews that say, okay, we know there's flux, 
We know there's constant motion, constant change and so on, but let's see if we can find some regularity in it. And that regularity is then what we use as a reference. So for instance, we're finding that there's a regularity in the sun coming up every day, okay? That day and night, okay? Well then, yeah, that starts to become part of our, part of our reference points, see? But in the native world, because of the flux notion, the door is always left open. It's always left open for something different to happen. So in other words, we cannot take for granted that the sun is going to come up every day. Okay? We can't take it for granted. We always have to remind ourselves the sun may not come up. We have to come back to developing a culture with maybe different reference points if we're going to save our planet and so on. The Earth is our mother. It provides for us. So we need to connect with our, with our mind. The only thing I would add is to thank SEED for sponsoring these dialogues that we've had in Albuquerque for the past number of years now and encourage them to continue with them because they're really excellent forums for knowledge exchange and intellectual nurturing and so forth and they have just been very good therapy for people who do participate in the dialogue. So I want to thank Seed for being a sponsor and carrying that tradition on.